Welcome to the 2021 Heart of America Athletic Conference Women's Volleyball Media Day. I'm your host, Stephen Davis. Today, we're joined by Graceland University Head Women's Volleyball Coach, Stu McDowell. Coach, thanks for taking some time for us. How are you doing today? Well, it's hot, Stephen. <laughs> it our, our facility here is under renovation, so the air conditioners are off. So it's almost like being outside. Oh boy. Well, hang in there. Hopefully you guys can get through it. Uh, I know this is, it's a, a new adventure for you every year and your 40th season beginning now. And I've got to believe that last fall, last season, as it stretched over the course of the school year, unlike any other that you've ever experienced, what lesson did you and your team learn last year in uh, that, that COVID altered season a year ago? Uh, the bottom line is no matter how comfy you are, no matter how comfy your university is, you can still get put down by COVID. Now, my, my team was in quarantine for a month. We didn't play quite half of our season, 13 matches out of what, 36, something like that. And the head coach was in quarantine for six weeks during the season. Here's what it is. So we have hopes that we might be able to get to play a little more this season. That's the objective anyway. Absolutely. Hopefully much more normalcy prevailing this fall as we get things going. As we look forward to this 2021 season now, how has preseason camp gone for you? Obviously, other than the heat and the building being full of sweat with uh, no air conditioning. Well, uh, it's actually been more uh, trying than that. Because with the gym being renovated, there went our courts. So uh, our only avenue to train has been to share with the high school. So we take all of their downtime. And we have a varsity, a varsity reserve, and two JV teams. So that means if you try to work in a two-hour practice twice a day, that puts the, the coach in the gym for eight hours. Uh, so <laughs> that's been a struggle. I'm actually, you know, yesterday was the first day of classes. I was sort of glad to see classes start, although I teach too. So, but it's been a challenge. Uh, the high school has been really uh, generous with us from that standpoint. But now that their school is starting too, we don't get access to the gym until like 7.30 at night. So we're looking at going to potentially 11 o'clock at night to get practices in. Wow, burning the midnight oil to get things going. Now, you guys still have a few weeks till matches start in early September. What do you hope to see from your squad when things finally do get going uh, around Labor Day for you with uh, plenty of practice time to lead into that still? Well, uh, we're like every other team at this stage of the preseason. We're kind of beat up. You know, I've got three kids on the varsity, well, four, four kids on the varsity roster that are sort of half-masked. You know, just really not quite one of them, two of them out with groin, one with a hip flexure and one with a, you know, a possible labor injury, we're not sure. Uh, so that's a challenge. You take four kids who really can only do some things in practice. So it's been really hard to get an accurate assessment of who's who, you know, where, where is the maximal talent, that kind of thing. Last night practice, you know, I, I kind of uh, had some glimpses. You know, we had a kid been gone to a wedding for three days and she came back and she was like, I think I should send her to a wedding every week. She looked better, you know, when she came back. Uh, and it was helpful to kind of see some of the talent materialize. Some kids that we moved up uh, uh, clearly were vying for court time. And um, so, you know, we could get healthy over that period of time, and we could get to a point where we have pretty secure sense of who the starters are and, and can help to establish roles, that, that would be the goal between here and there. Obviously, as you talk about, it's still a lot of things to be sorted out for your team before matches begin, but who are some returners that you're counting on to, to see some court time and be leaders for your team this season? Yeah, you know, uh, we, we return an honorable mention on Copper Setter, who's a sophomore. And she's prototypical for what you would want in a setter. She's 5'11". She's a good jumper, uh, fast arm, good feet, and a lefty. Uh, and, you know, for most coaches, if you, know, if you could wish for a setter, you would wish for size, lefty, and a good brain. She's also a 4.0 type student. 
So, uh, you know, I think she potentially is a really critical piece in the whole mix. Uh, you know, I'm just looking at that and I'm thinking, all right, you know, we return other starters. We've, we've got a couple of kids who I think are surprising. We've got a sophomore, a right side, who, who played right side last year. You know, I'm looking real heavily because I think she may be our best swing that she may go left side uh, this year. And her platform's not bad. So left side might, you know, might be the place for her. We have an experienced right side who's like a three-year starter. Um, solid blocker. But uh, at the end of the day, she brings a lot of the non-tangibles to the team because she's sort of the glue, the, the, the interpersonal behavioral glue for the team. So I'm liking that. Um, I don't know. We, we, we're probably a good shot at running a 6-2. Uh, we have a, uh, a young lady who was out with the tour ACL during preseason last year as a freshman. Uh, Nice setter from Puerto Rico, jump setter, uh, does some nice things. You know, I think she could make a difference. Uh, that's just my opinion, uh, just looking out there. And then we have physical middle who, who uh, joined us as freshman, who's the one surprise on varsity. Uh, you know, she has a good chance to get a lot of court time. Probably, you know, I mean, a, a player that, coaches would remember is Jasmine Fanati, who is sort of an undersized middle for us from Hawaii. Uh, she's really a short 5'10", but she's a big sky jumper, fast arm, uh, smart player. And she went out in the middle of the season last year with the shoulder. So we have our fingers crossed that that's fixed. Uh, all those materialize, who knows? It could be pretty good. <laughs> The conference is daunting, you know, because over the last two or three years, I mean, just the conference has matured to be arguably, you know, at least the second best conference in the country, just in terms of top to bottom uh, talent. You know, and with five teams last year that were getting some attention in the polls, you know, that, that's a tough mountain to climb. Coach, I want to ask you about your career for a moment. You volunteered in so many different capacities around the sport of volleyball. What are some moments that stand out to you from your career, different championships you've worked or different events you've been to over the course of uh, a lifetime spent coaching volleyball? Uh, you know, just looking at the NAI, uh, I was so sad when the Hawaii teams left the NAI uh, because at the time they were the, you know, they were the top echelon, basically. Uh, tending to win. I mean, if you look back at the history and you look at how many national championships Hilo won and then how many championships, B, you know, BYUH won and then Hawaii Pacific, uh, you know, and when the Hawaii teams uh, elected for a different direction, I was, I was concerned about the quality of volleyball. Uh, and then what happened is the California teams just stepped into that void. And if you ask me, I would say, it was so sad to see the white teams go, but at the end of the day, the quality of play and the depth of quality in the NAI didn't suffer, you know, because the, the California teams, you know, the Southern Pacifics and the Azusa Pacifics and the Biolas and the Cal Baptists, you know, kind of stepped into that and were like, whoa, you know, amazingly high quality teams. And then one by one, most of them ticked off into Division Two. You know, and you think, whoa, where's the quality of NAI volleyball going? And uh, part of the answer is uh, the GPAC, you know, the teams in the GPAC just all of a sudden started to emerge at the various highest level. Uh, and now I think, you know, you start to look at the Northwest, you look at the GPAC, you look at the heart, you look at some emerging teams in the South, uh, you know, it's, it is probably the most national that volleyball has ever been in the NEI, and the quality of play is, is incredibly good. Along the way, we made a decision as an NEI to de deviate from uh, NCAA rules with respect to substitution. We're the only uh, area of volleyball at the collegiate level that has open substitution. So substitution is 
if it's not restricted like it is in high school or in other college settings or a club. And I think that that has helped, honestly, to uh, invigorate interest in the platform players uh, because you can carry one, two, three, more than that three rotation kids who maybe play only back row, but who um, bring a quality of play to the court that might not have otherwise existed. Um, and I think that, that has helped to raise the, the quality of volleyball over the years there and has helped to sustain it. You know, I, I think the other thing that, that just strikes me is that at least in my uh, history with the NEI, there has always been a um, noticeable level of collegiality among coaches and programs. Uh, and I get the sense that that's maybe not true, you know, necessarily in every other NEI sport, nor is it true in every other level of uh, volleyball in the collegiate world. But it seems to have been true in the NEI. And it makes it pleasurable to want to serve in that kind of setting and because you know your colleagues appreciate what's going on and, and you know that they're willing to be collaborative in uh, helping in the eyeball and also be the very best that it can be. Uh, I suppose one of the downsides of that is that the coaches and the coaches association have grown to expect uh, some leverage in the decision-making process within the NAI. And when that's present, they feel really integrated and really like a member of the team. When it isn't there, they get a little bit irritated. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a great answer to your question. No, I'm, I, you know, I've also served with USA Volleyball and I've served with the American Volleyball Coaches Association. You know, so I know the gold medalists you know, I, I know the beach players and, you know, I've had a chance to interact with the gold medal coaches, you know, both indoor and outdoor. And uh, that's, it's been a really positive and enriching experience over a lot of time. How exciting was it to see the, the women's volleyball team win gold at the Olympics this year? It was way exciting. Um, you know, I go back there a little bit. I actually worked at the site at the LA Olympics. I was the technical equipment supervisor. So I was at courtside, you know, for every match for the entire Olympics. And I can so remember uh, when the USA women's team was choosing not to come back to the court, you know, and semifinal action at LA Olympics you know, and seeing the association jump into action, the associate, you know, the CEO of the USA Volleyball getting the court side and making certain that the kids return to the court, et cetera. And they didn't win a gold medal and we arguably had the best team in the, you know, in the world at the time. And so over that time, you know, you just look at how high, what a high level our international teams have consistently performed, but have always been the bridesmaid or a final four, never quite the Olympic champion. And, um, you know, I looked at this year and when I watched Karch Karai, the, the women's coach in an interview sort of cloud up a little bit when the commentator asked him, you know, what do you, what do you hope for for this team? And they just said, I really want this for this program. And you could see that that was an emotionally charged moment for him. And, you know, I know Karch and, you know, I followed his career forever. And I was really touched that he was so engaged in behalf of the players for that moment and the association to finally sit at the top of the podium, stand at the top of the podium. It was, it was majorly exciting. And I stayed up until 1 a.m. to watch the match. Yeah, I have to. Coach, great stuff. Good luck this season. Uh, hope you have a great year. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate the time, Stephen. See you later. That's Graceland University women's volleyball coach, Stu McDowell.